So in this video, I'm gonna give you five steps you can take to correct insulin resistance. So what's exciting is that you really can do this. You don't have to view this like, oh, I'm insulin resistant because I have a metformin deficiency. That's, that's not what happened. It's because of the choices that you made and the way that your body was processing those choices that this came about. And that means that you can start to make different choices and change how your body's processing those choices to turn the whole thing around. So if you haven't already, pause this video and watch our other video on how you become insulin resistant because you really need to understand that in order to make these steps make sense. But if you've already seen this video, let's jump into these five steps. TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. Now as you jump into these steps, you're really going to want to track your progress and see how things are going. And I don't need you to use a continuous blood sugar monitor or anything like that, but I would like you to just check your fasting blood sugar from time to time. And you can do this with a finger prick with a glucometer that you pick up at your local pharmacy for $30 or $40. But just don't view this fasting blood sugar number as it needs to go bing, 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 bing. It's not going to do that. It's going to go bing, 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 bing. You just want to start seeing that lower number trend down. So if your fasting blood sugar is about 100 or higher, that's usually a good sign that insulin resistance is starting to get to the point where it could create some weight gain or some other troubles. That's when you really want to start seeing it go a little bit lower. So just know that this is going to take time. You're not going to fix this by Thursday so you can go to the big square dance on Friday night. This is going to take time to really get it to come down. So don't get discouraged if you see it go down, but then go back up again. It's absolutely going to do that. That's just how the body works as it's correcting this issue. Step number one is to be mindful of the carbohydrates or sugars that you're consuming, especially liquid sugars. Liquid sugars spike blood sugar a lot harder and a lot faster and are going to raise that insulin a lot higher so it's going to stay high a lot longer and keep yelling at the cells like we talked about in that previous video. So we really are going to have to lower our carbohydrate consumption in order to get our insulin to come down. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't have any carbohydrates, but if you're leaning towards a type 2 diabetes type insulin resistance, when you're eating carbohydrates, you're basically bringing in a food that your body can't process correctly. So anything that the body can't process no longer becomes a fuel. It becomes a burden that the body has to deal with and figure out how to get rid of. So if you can't process those carbohydrates very well, it's not really doing you a lot of good to bring so many in. So we really want to bring those carbohydrates down so that insulin can come down, stop yelling at the cells all day long, and eventually the cells can be more receptive to insulin. You become more insulin sensitive. The insulin becomes more effective. You can sweep out the blood sugar using a lot less insulin and the insulin can stay low and allow you to access stored fat and burn it for fuel. All those good things that we want to see happen and there's ways that you can use these carbs to make it a little bit easier for you and we'll talk about that in a second. But it can also be beneficial to use a ketogenic diet or intermittent fasting because both of those are really going to lower that carbohydrate intake significantly and make it a lot easier to lower those carbohydrates. Now, keto and intermittent fasting are not right for everybody. There's certain imbalances and malfunctions in the body that can cause keto and intermittent fasting to create more trouble than good. So we'll put a link in the description below this video on our videos for who should not use a ketogenic diet and who should not use intermittent fasting. Now it is true that in long term a ketogenic diet does have the ability to create some insulin resistance for some people. And I haven't made this video yet but it's coming up soon so check the description below to see if our video on how keto can create insulin resistance is ready for you. But for most people when they first start keto it can really help correct insulin resistance. It takes a long time for a ketogenic diet to create any type of insulin resistance and that's only going to occur for some people with specific situations going on. But again, a ketogenic diet is not required to fix this. You can do this with a lower carb diet if you cycle the carbs the right way. Sometimes keto can just speed things up a little bit if keto is appropriate for you. Now step number two, this might surprise some folks, but it's to fix any digestive symptoms. If you're dealing with any issues like burping or bloating or acid reflux or constipation or diarrhea or nausea or maybe food just kind of sits there in your stomach like a rock for hours, all of these are signs that digestion is not working correctly. 
And when you can't break down protein correctly to use that, and you can't emulsify or break down our dietary fats so the body can use those, then your body's really going to scream for carbohydrates. So if you're going to lower your carbohydrates, you're going to need to increase your protein and fat intake. And if you can't digest those correctly, this will not work for you. You will absolutely be miserable. You'll gain weight. You'll yell at the mailman because you don't like the shorts that he's wearing. It's all going to be a horrible situation and you're going to quit. So if you have any type of digestive symptoms, you really need to fix those. In my book, Kick Your Fat in the Nuts, chapters 3 and 4, kind of walk you through figuring out are there aspects of digestion that are not working correctly? And if so, what steps you can take to correct those? And the book is available on Amazon, but I'm going to put a link in the description below this video where you can get the whole thing totally for free. And you can jump to chapters 3 and 4 and figure out how to correct that issue so that you qualify to lower your carbohydrates and fix this problem. Step number three is to fix any carbohydrate or sugar cravings and reduce the stress that the body's dealing with. So if you're having a lot of cravings for carbs and sugars, there's usually a reason for that. But if there's a reason, you're going to have a hard time reducing these carbs without going nuts and finding yourself knee deep in a bag of donuts before you even realize that you're eating donuts. So we really have to fix these cravings. And the most common cause for cravings is low blood sugar and low mineral levels. The body really needs minerals to send signals through and to help a lot of the functions of the body take place. And without those minerals, the body can use glucose to kind of take the place of some of those minerals. So if mineral levels are really low, the body's going to scream for carbohydrates and sugars for sort of a quick fix. So you can look at your blood pressure at least two hours after a meal, but not first thing in the morning. It should be after a meal. And if that systolic number, the top number, is less than 112, that's a really strong sign that there's not enough minerals in the system for the body to function the way that it wants to function. And if that's the case for you, we'll put a link to our video for how to lift your mineral levels in the description below this video so you can check that out. But a lot of times when there's not enough minerals in the system, it's also going to stress the body out. Maybe the body isn't getting the nutrients it needs because digestion is not working correctly or it's not getting the fuel that it needs. And when the body's stressed, it'll raise stress hormones. And a lot of times these stress hormones will tell the body to make more of its own glucose. Hey, why don't you break down some of this tissue and turn that into glucose so we can use that for fuel. And that's why you don't always want to trust that fasting blood sugar number because a person can eat no carbohydrates at all and still see their blood sugar go up the next day because the body made more of its own glucose. So just don't watch your fasting blood sugar and view it as this number is a representation of what I ate yesterday. That's not how it works. It's a lot more complicated than that and there's a lot more things going on that can affect where that blood sugar is going to be. But to fix those cravings, you may also need to fix those digestive issues so your body can process fats correctly. You really want the body to be a little more fat adapted and not feeling like it needs carbohydrates just to function. Because when you lower carbohydrates and you bring that insulin down, now the body can access stored fat and burn that for fuel. So you want the body to feel good about burning that fuel, have the ability to burn that fuel, because now the body's not going to be stressed, it's not going to make more of its own glucose, and you're going to be able to burn stored fat and make your pants smaller. When the cells can't really listen to insulin and allow that glucose to come in to be used properly, the cells don't know the glucose is there. So they're going to scream for more sugar. So we really got to fix the ability to get fuel out of dietary fats and help the body burn stored fat so you're not getting these cravings for sugars and carbs all the time. Step number four is to cycle your carbs. So when you're trying to lower carbohydrates, that doesn't mean that you can't eat any, but you really want to have these long windows of time where you're not bringing in many carbohydrates so that insulin has a chance to come down. Remember, it takes insulin a lot longer to come down than it does our blood sugar. So think about this. When you go to bed, as you sleep, you're not eating any carbohydrates. This is a great time to allow insulin to come down to that good zone where you're able to burn stored fat for fuel. So in the morning, when you go to have breakfast, if you keep that very low carb and don't really eat any carbs for breakfast, you're extending that window of time. Maybe when you get really good at this, you can even extend it into lunch and not really eat many carbs there either, and maybe you just eat them at dinner. Or you can put your carbs early in the day and do what we call a 3 p.m. carb cutoff where after 3 o'clock, the only carbs you're consuming are from green vegetables. So you're just eating green vegetables, proteins, and some fat. And you're leaving out the carbs, which makes that window when insulin can come down start a lot earlier. 
So you just want to put that window either at the end of the day or at the beginning of the day so you're extending that sleeping window where insulin had the ability to come down. Now if you saw that your mineral levels were really low, you're probably going to need a little bit more carbohydrates until you can bring those mineral levels up. So you might need to include carbohydrates in two of your meals or maybe all of your meals and it's just a lower level of carbohydrates instead of just having them in one meal. I talk a lot more about how to do that cycling in my book as well that you can get for free in the description below. Now step number five is to eat real nutrient rich foods. I know this sounds almost like a crazy person when I say this, but when you can remove all these processed foods that are just filled with carbohydrates and sugars and processed junk that your body doesn't really know what to do with, and you can bring in real nutrients that your body can use, this can change the whole game. Did you know that that's why we eat food? The body doesn't want food, it wants the nutrients in that food. So it's not looking for a toaster pastry, it's looking for vitamins and minerals and amino acids and dietary fats. That's what the body's looking for. So when you're giving it all this processed junk that just includes red dye number 75, you're not really giving the body what it needs and it's going to scream for more stuff. When you can give your body real nutrients, all of a sudden it's going to be satiated and you're not going to need snacks all the time and you're really going to be able to bring your carbohydrate levels down. When you're looking at eating more real food, you can also change the type of carbohydrates you're consuming. Instead of bringing in this bread and pasta and rice and all this other processed junk, you can eat things like sweet potatoes or yams or butternut squash or Brussels sprouts. All of those contain real carbohydrates that can give you the carbs that you need to function and to feel satiated without creating such a huge spike in blood sugar that's also going to create the huge spike in insulin. So we call these medium carb foods. And when you're going to eat your carbohydrates, if you can eat these medium carb foods, then you allow insulin to come down a lot faster and get back into that fat burning zone a lot sooner. So these five steps can really help you turn some things around, but you also want to make sure that you're not doing the wrong things. A lot of times it's not about implementing the right things, it's about stopping doing the wrong thing. And one of those wrong things could be dealing with a catabolic imbalance like we talked about in the previous video. You really want to understand if that's a problem for you so you can correct that issue as well. So what I want you to do right now is jump over to our video on five mistakes that can create insulin resistance so you can figure out if you need to remove any of these mistakes. A lot of these mistakes are advice that they give to people that are insulin resistant. Oops! Get over there and check it out.